Well, good morning, sunshine. I hope everybody's doing well. And as you can see, I'm set up to do some more shooting through my chronograph. And I'm going to be doing pretty much the same thing as I did last time. Um, I'm going to be weighing all my charges, but this is what's going to change. Okay. My first two shots will be the same as last. Go X, the one following shot, and then the second shot, because I just kind of want to see once again what those two numbers do. And after that, with my homemade gunpowder, I will be scaling out 80 grains of my homemade gunpowder, because I kind of want to see what those numbers are going to do through the chronograph. Now, with that being said, here's another exception. In my last video, when I used Jake's formula of uh, 7713, 11, the 11 being the sulfur, I went ahead and made myself another batch of gunpowder with the basswood, but I went back to the formula of 7515, 11. Just simply because in thinking about all of this the only true variant is the charcoal once again depending on the specific gravity or the species of wood you're going to get different results which is what we've all been noting um, for me I'm not overly concerned about the cleanest burning gunpowder but I would like to know the feet per second as I stated in the previous video, is it going to change what I do? Absolutely not. But it does kind of, you know, set, you know, set the scope of what of what I would be viewing um, from a muzzle loading perspective, in particular with my flintlock. And um, I did 86 that jar of basswood that I made with. Um, the formula 7713 just simply because I, I could tell right off the bat without the chronograph confirming that that basswood was slower burning. So like I said, I made another batch and I'm ready to test that right now. And yes, there's a little bit of breeze from time to time. So you're going to have to excuse that. And as you can see, the breeze does have an effect on what the scale does. So I'm going to have to try to find a spot that I can get the scale out of the direct breeze so that I can get those measurements spot on. So um, I think that's all I want to describe right here. Um, my, like I said, my first two shots will be go X, one will be a fouling. I have clay pigeons set up and um, got my patches ready to go between my cheeks and a glass of water right there. So I'm going to get set up and um, let's see what happens with these numbers. Well, as my former employer used to say, you wait for the wind to stop blowing, you'll never get anything done. So here's shot number one, the Go X 3F, weighed on the scale at 70 grains, 3F. That's my following shot. Let's see what the scale says. Fifteen seventy five. Shot number two. Fifteen sixty-six. Okay, now I've got eighty grains of my juniper. I pulled that one. Sixteen. 61. Okay, this is my barberry that I only milled one time. Uh -huh. 
bomb shooting all over the place this morning. Let's see what that reads. Fifteen, eighteen. Curious. Okay, this is the Barberry milled 30 hours. See what we got. Sixteen oh nine. Okay, this is the basswood with Jake's formula of seventy seven thirteen. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the charcoal is really the only variant in any of this. I have the flash pan loaded with the basswood that is the 7515 formula. So let's see what it does. Slow, but let's see what we got. Fifteen forty. Well, as you can tell, the breeze is picking up. This will be my last shot. This is actually the last gunpowder I want to test anyways. This is the gunpowder I made with the basswood. This time I went with the 7515 formula. I want to see for myself how much of a difference there's going to be by adding or subtracting some of the charcoal because like I said previously, previously in this video, the charcoal is the only variant in any of this. So let's see what we got going on. Fifteen forty-eight. I'm gonna go pick up the patch, gather everything. I've been picking up the patches as I've been going, lining them up just to see um, how clean they're actually burning. So let me get this uh, accomplished, and I'll meet you in just a moment. Okay, before the breeze blows these off the table, this is the patch with the juniper. Eighty grains. You can see it burnt pretty clean this is the patch with the barberry that I um, you know just milled the one time pucked it one time and of course I puck all my gunpowders once okay this is the barberry that was milled for 30 hours looking at these two patches they're kind of comparable in you know fouling here's the patch with the basswood and Jake's formula of 7713 and this is the patch from the gunpowder made with the basswood as the charcoal with the 7515 looking at these two patches I don't know how well the cameras picking it up but the patch that came from the formula of the 7515 from my perspective looks a lot cleaner burning than the other formula at 77.13. So let me um, get repositioned and I'll rerun these numbers again and I'll compare them to what I did the other day. Obviously having to pull the camera out of the wind I have to do the conclusion in my shop here. Now something else that I should also make everybody aware of the other day and today before I even fired my fouling shot, I took a cleaning patch and I went down my barrel twice to get out all of the lubricant, uh, my homemade lubricant, down the barrel because how much of that lubricant is also acting as an accelerant? Okay, that's just something I'm not going to test, I'm just quarrying this. 
and uh, just so that we all know um, the scope that I'm working within here I did clean any residual oil out of that barrel before I took my following shot so what did we get today well my following shot with GoX was 1575 my second shot like the other day dropped today was 1566 now bear in mind the next shots with my homemade gunpowder was weighed at 80 grains okay so with my juniper today I get a speed of 1661 the barberry 1518 and that was the barberry that I'd only you know milled the one time when the media was sitting on top oh it's done that's what I got today with 80 grains of weighed powder the barberry that I actually milled for 30 hours and there again at about the 26 27th hour whatever it was even though the media was on top I went through and stirred it all up again and then milled that an hour later the media is on top stirred it all up and I did that till I got 30 hours that would today actually got 1609 so there was a considerable difference in the feet per second just to reiterate the barberry that I only milled one time got a speed of 1518 the barberry milled for 30 hours got a speed of 1609 considerable difference now the basswood um, using Jake's formula of 1713, 77 grams of potassium nitrate and 13 grams of charcoal, I recorded a speed of 1514. The other day, I mentioned that that basswood at 7713 recorded a much slower speed. So at that point, I was thinking to myself that the only variant in any of our gunpowders is the charcoal and that's kind of why I did that video you know last week or whenever talking about specific gravity okay now the basswood that I went back and I remade with the normal formula of 7515 I actually recorded a speed of 1548 so it did jump up by about 30 feet per second so it appears to me right here that sticking with the normal the regular formula of 7515 you're gonna achieve several feet more per second now how does all of this balance out from the other day well the other day in the previous video now bear in mind the other day all of my gunpowders were weighed at 70 grains okay so my following shot with the GoX was 1586 the uh, second shot was 1572 so even by what I did today today's shooting with the GoX the numbers went down now I have a theory about that and the theory is your gun barrel in these hot temperatures because I'm actually recorded this much later in the day today and the outside ambient temperature was a lot hotter okay so does the outside temperature have an effect since metal will expand with the heat does that lower your feet per second well the only way anybody can determine that is to shoot when it's a dead ass cold day not like today when it's hot as hell <laughs> in fact just a side note we actually canceled our eye appointment for today because we didn't want to leave our four dogs outside in the hot temperatures so we were mindful of that okay now going to the juniper okay the other day I recorded with 70 grains weighed of 1588 today the juniper 80 grains weighed 
I managed to get 1661. So there's a considerable difference right there. But like the other day, my juniper burned very clean. Now remember, when I did that video on specific gravity, I could not find a specific gravity of juniper. Just simply because it said me, um, low to medium. Okay? And I'm just guessing medium is point, you know, five zero. Okay? Now, the barberry, the other day that I only milled one time, 70 grains, I got 1442. Today, I got 1518 with 80 grains weighed, so a big difference. Now, the, um, the barberry that I milled for 30 hours on the previous test, I managed to record a uh, speed of 1477. Today, I got 1609. Okay, so there's not really a whole lot of bit of difference right there from the other day at 1477 and today at 1514 not a whole lot of difference 30 40 feet per second basically but I found these these next two numbers interesting the basswood with the 7713 formula I recorded 1514 the other day I recorded the first time, because I actually did it twice, because I wanted to see how clean the patches were burning, or how much, how foul the patches were. My first shot the other day with Jake's formula, my first shot recorded 1406. My second shot recorded 1405. So that's consistent. I mean, there's not much of a variation in feet per second, only one. Now today. And recognizing that I did not record the other day of the 7515 formula, today with the 7515 formula at 80 grains, I recorded 1548. Whereas with Jake's formula, 80 grains, I only recorded 1514. From my perspective, that's considerably slower. And probably what I'm going to do from here on out is, I'm, well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix the two barberries and the two basswoods and just use it for plinking. Because at this point, I've gotten what I want to see through the chronograph. Now, I know somebody's probably going to say, well, in order to be more scientific, you know, you need to run a series of five or six shots, figure out what the average is, and then do the formula and then get the plus or minus. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. If I do anything, it'll just only be for my own knowledge. Just simply because these numbers are not going to change what I do. Just simply not going to do that. If I'm at a rendezvous and I'm using my juniper, am I really going to be concerned about getting 100 feet more, more per second? No, I'm just going to shoot my normal 70 grains and be happy with the uh, 1588. I'm just going to be happy with that. So it doesn't change anything that I'm going to do when it comes to shooting my black powder guns. It's good to have the information, but in all honesty, what I do is not going to change. Simple as that. And as far as making any more gunpowder, you know, other than perhaps the occasionally, uh, occasional experimenting with it, I'm going to stick with my juniper because it seems to burn the most consistent and the cleanest. So take it for what it's worth, guys. Thanks for indulging me, and I hope everybody will have a blessed day. Bye.